This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. For 92.7 WMDX News, I'm Savannah Tome Olson. It's going to be a busy week all over Wisconsin. The final week before the election means we're going to have a lot of campaign visits. Here's just a quick rundown of some of them. We've got Governor Tim Walls in Manitowoc and Waukesha today, plus J.D. Vance is in Wausau. Bernie Sanders is in Oshkosh this afternoon. Then tonight, he'll be joined by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez here in Madison. Former President Donald Trump will hold a rally in Green Bay on Wednesday. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris will have a rally slash concert here in Madison Wednesday night. And then Trump will be back in Wisconsin for another rally on Friday at Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee. And over the weekend, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg was here in the Badger State. Here's Lisa Hale. Pete Buttigieg was in Oshkosh Saturday drumming up support for the Democratic ticket and invigorating Canvas volunteers. Communities red, blue, and purple already understand that if we're serious about protecting children in school, that's not about keeping a Toni Morrison paperback out of the school library. It's about making sure assault weapons don't get anywhere near the school. Buttigieg also spoke in Green Bay, Appleton, and Fond du Lac Saturday. If you haven't seen it for yourself, chances are you've seen photos. It was the talk of the city over the weekend. An unusual art installation showed up on Madison's north side. It's a statue of former President Donald Trump depicted nude. The piece is on tour across the country called the Crooked and Obscene Tour. The Cap Times called it anatomically specific, and that phrase is accurate. It's 43 feet tall, made out of foam and rebar, and weighs 6,000 pounds. It's held up by a crane. People were driving around trying to find it. It was kind of tucked behind some trees based on where you stood on private property near Demetro Park. It's already been in Las Vegas and Pennsylvania. It was only scheduled to be here in Madison for the weekend, so it's likely headed to its next stop. Two people were shot in a downtown Madison restaurant yesterday. It happened in the early morning hours at Sabora's Fusion Grill. Police say there was some kind of altercation and shots rang out. One man has injuries that aren't life-threatening, but the other is in critical condition at the hospital. Also, over the weekend, someone was shot at a Dane County gas station. The sheriff's office says authorities were called to the BP on County Highway N Saturday. That's in the town of Pleasant Springs. There they found one person had been shot multiple times. They were taken to the hospital. We don't know the extent of their injuries. Lots of law enforcement agencies are part of this investigation. The Dane County Sheriff's Office, Wisconsin State Troopers, and police from McFarland, Cottage Grove, and Stoughton. And we now have some answers in that bizarre case of cross-contamination where some people ate some pizza and learned that they had ingested THC. Friday, we reported that people who ate at Famous Yetis in Stoughton were testing positive for the substance. Officials from Public Health Madison, Dane County, were called to investigate when multiple people were taken to the hospital. And one said, hey, this almost feels like I've eaten an edible. And all the people with symptoms ate pizza from Famous Yetis. Health Department staff found that a container of pizza dough there tested positive for THC. Well, here's the update. A report from the health department says last week the operator was making pizza in a building that operates as an industrial kitchen for lots of businesses. They have their own separate spaces, often entire rooms to themselves. Well, this person making the pizza dough ran out of cooking oil and they started looking in other kitchens to borrow some. Health department staff say the person grabbed what looked like cooking oil, but of course it wasn't. It had a label on the lid saying it contained THC. Now, we don't know what business it was that had that oil, but health officials working with police say it was something totally legal in Wisconsin. Last week, officials got dozens of reports from people who ate there and just didn't feel quite right afterwards. A fight turned weird outside a Madison bar over the weekend. Madison police say they were called to Soto Nightclub on Henry Street early Saturday morning. There, they were told that during a fight, a man bit part of another man's finger off. The person bitten was taken to the hospital, and the biter later turned himself in to authorities. And the man charged with killing a UW-Whitewater gymnast will stand trial. 21-year-old Kara Welsh was shot and killed August 30th in an apartment near the Whitewater campus. She was an All-American gymnast and beloved by the campus community. 23-year-old Chad Richards of Loves Park, Illinois, is charged with homicide. Records show he's set to stand trial starting November 8th. And gas prices are dropping. Here's Melissa Kay. The average gas prices in Wisconsin fell 6.7 cents during the last week. The average across the state today is 2.87 per gallon. 
This is over 21 cents lower than a month ago, and more than 31 cents lower than this time last year. Gas is at its lowest level since January, which some Americans attribute to the upcoming election. Officials at Gas Buddy say politicians have little influence over gasoline prices. The switch to winter gas and the drop in demand is pushing gas prices down. Officials say these drops will continue into and even beyond the election as colder weather arrives. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of regular gas here in Madison is two ninety four. A month ago, it was three thirteen, and a week ago, it was three dollars even. And could Milwaukee get its own WNBA team? While、well, the Bucks ownership group submitted a proposal to the league last week, this bid comes after the WNBA announced plans to add new franchises across the country by 2028. Now we don't know what any kind of timeline would look like here, but the Cream City did once have a professional women's basketball team. They were known as the Milwaukee Does. They played in the WNBA for one season in 1979. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. This is 92.7 WMDX News. Another walk-off win for Green Bay. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Packers kicked a field goal as time expired to beat the Jaguars in Jacksonville, 30 to 27. Backup quarterback Malik Willis played most of the second half after Jordan Love left with a groin injury. Matt Lafleur asked if he knew how severe was Love's injury. I do not, no idea. But obviously, high level of concern anytime a guy is in there, and he did it early in that first drive, and I think everybody could see him struggling. I just it got to a point where we didn't feel like, and he didn't feel. Like he could protect himself. Up next, the Packers host the Lions, who beat the Titans 52 to 14 in Detroit. College football: The Wisconsin Badgers turned their attention to playing the Iowa Hawkeyes Saturday night. Wisconsin now five and three after losing to undefeated Penn State 28-13. NBA: The Bucks in Boston tonight after losing to the Brooklyn Nets 115 to 102. Giannis says they simply need to play better. Got to improve our offense. Got to improve our defense. We're not playing well. We have to be better. It doesn't matter if it's game one, game three, game fifty. We got to keep coming together as a team. Keep on. Taking care of the ball, keep on being aggressive, find ways to play faster. I think we're playing. We are too stagnant. That's the Bucks, Giannis and Tedekupo with sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Despite a prolific run that has spanned decades, actor Liam Neeson says he is done with the action film genre. The 72-year-old actor and star of the Taken films, among many others, says age is catching up with him. But the fact that he has made so many action movies is remarkable, and even more remarkable that they all have pretty much the same plot in which he seeks revenge on those who threaten or kill his family members. The genius is that he gets his revenge from film to film by changing locations, various cities, countries, cars, trains, planes, and even Even a snowplow. If you're looking for a film that has some action but is a little more plausible, check out In the Land of Saints and Sinners from 2023. Not a bad watch. Speaking of old white guys, season two of The Old Man wrapped with a cliffhanger last week, and Jeff Bridges is already hinting at a season three. Bridges plays CIA operative Dan Chase on the FX show, which drew two primetime Emmy nominations. It seems like it's taken forever, but there might be a speed three. See what I did there? In a recent chat with the Hollywood Reporter, 20th Century Studios' Steve Asbell. Gave Gave the movie-going public hope when it comes to more sequels destined for the big screen in the near future. Asbell says he is open to Speed Three if it's a great idea, but that the studio will definitely pursue another Alien, and says there will be a new Predator film in theaters in 2025 as well. Asbell also added there would be most likely another Alien versus Predator. Thanks, but not really necessary, Steve. Looking for something new to watch as the Halloween season winds down? Check out Bad Monkey on Apple TV. It took me a while to warm up to it, but it is a good show and keeps you guessing. Vince Vaughn basically plays. Himself, but this time he's named Andrew Yancey, a disgraced detective in Miami, trying to solve a case in which a severed arm is found with the middle finger of the hand extended. A funny gimmick, but the story unfolds nicely and the characters are interesting. Give it a watch. Fight Club fans, I'm sure there are still a few out there, will be happy to know that the film is getting a remaster. That's right, you can now watch Tyler Durden wail on himself in 4K. The Hollywood Reporter says the updated film will also get a re-release in November, according to director David Fincher. The 1999 film, starring Edward Norton, Brad Pitt, and Hel. Lena Bonham Carter and put Fincher on the map as a commercially viable directing talent. Fight Club didn't knock the socks off the box office during its initial release, but it has since become a cult classic. Those of you who may experience Yellowstone withdrawal have a new western to look forward to thanks to Netflix. Territory is a new Australian drama set in the outback. Think Yellowstone with a dash of Crocodile Dundee. According to the Rap.com, the show has got billionaires, cattle baron rivals, cattle thieves, and old wise indigenous elders. The show stars Robert Taylor and Michael Dorman. Season. One will consist of six episodes. Happy viewing! For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from six to eight p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. 
A little sunshine today, but overall it's going to be mostly cloudy, becoming windy by later this afternoon. Our high today in the mid-60s. Tonight, mostly cloudy, a sprinkle or two with a low in the upper 50s to low 60s. We'll be partly cloudy and windy with a high near 80 tomorrow, but we will cool down with scattered rain by later this week. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 46. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 